want to start this video by personally thanking each and every one of you for helping me break 100 subscribers in the time between my last video and this one. For whatever reason, a year after it was uploaded, the YouTube algorithm decided to give my Lister Storm video more love than I feel it deserved. Honestly, I think that was what I needed to kick my ass back into gear and start taking this YouTube thing a little more seriously. So once again, thank you to all my returning and new subscribers, and I hope you enjoy. In today's car culture environment, it seems like everyone is trying to find a car that they believe is slept on. A car that deserves more respect than it gets. Or a car that is cooler and more capable than people give it credit for. Trouble is, cars that really fit that description are getting harder and harder to find. With the advent of things like the internet, it's become much easier to spread knowledge about cars, including even the most obscure ones. I mean, shit, that's kind of why this channel exists. Point is, more and more of those cars that used to be considered unpopular or uncool are being shoved into the realm of popularity and coolness thanks to the internet. Take the R33 Skyline GTR, for instance. For years, it was perpetrated as the inferior Skyline, hardly worth your time and a bit of a waste of money. But after thousands of web articles, YouTube videos, and a fair amount of arguing about the car's merits against its competitors, it's become a well-respected and revered car like its forefather, the Skyline R32. I see it as somewhat of my job here to aid in plunging some of these leftover cars into the spotlight if only for a brief moment. Today, I ask you to consider this. Chevrolet's answer to the Focus ST and Dodge SRT4, the Cobalt SS. Before we discuss the Cobalt SS, we should briefly talk about its base model version, which is something I neglected to do in the SRT4 video solely because I want to dedicate an entire video to the base neon. The Chevrolet Cobalt was introduced in 2004 for the 2005 model year. It was constructed on GM's Delta platform, shared with the Chevy HHR and the Saturn Ion. It was positioned as Chevrolet's entry-level economy car, replacing the Chevrolet Cavalier. It was also sold as the Pontiac G5 in the United States, and the Pontiac Pursuit in Canada. The Cobalt is not looked upon all too fondly in retrospect or in its own time. In a quote from Consumer Reports' Road Test, the Chevrolet Cobalt is a lackluster car that falls short in several key areas. Things like poor interior quality and general build quality issues are common complaints from both owners and journalists. The Cobalt SS was meant to be another American sports compact car aiming to take market share away from German and Japanese imports that were running rampant throughout the nation's youth. It was equipped with a supercharged four-cylinder originally, then changed to a turbocharged four-cylinder, both powering the front wheels through a five-speed manual. Obviously, the four-speed automatic offered on the base Cobalt wasn't available on the SS models. The first generation Cobalt SS was launched in 2004. Under the hood was a 205 horsepower LSJ inline 4 mounted transversely, delivering that power to the front wheels through a Saab derived 5 speed manual. Other changes for the SS model apart from the power plant were things such as a new body kit, stiffer suspension with front and rear anti roll bars, and interior modifications like an A pillar mounted boost cage. Similar to what Mopar did with the SRT4, GM offered dealer installed performance upgrade packages called Stage Kits that were covered by a factory warranty. The Stage 1 kit consists of new fuel injectors and a reprogramming of the ECU, which yields a 30 horsepower improvement. The Stage 2 kit, along with the new injectors and the same reprogram, comes with a smaller serpentine belt and pulley for the supercharger, producing a 36 horsepower improvement and 18 pound feet of torque. Both Stage 1 and 2 kits increase the engine redline to 7,000 RPM. The Stage 3 kit consists of an even smaller pulley, 76 millimeters or 3 inches, a two-pass intercooler end plate and a fully customizable ECU. The Stage 3 ECU allows for the use of a 50 shot of nitrous, 100 octane fuel, and an adjustable red line from 6,750 RPM to 8,000 RPM. The Stage 3 Cobalts produced a total of 248 horsepower using 93 octane fuel, up to 260 horsepower using 100 octane fuel, and much higher power with nitrous. The Cobalt SS Supercharged was discontinued in 2007 due to the termination of Chevrolet's contract with supercharger manufacturer Eaton and tightening emissions regulations. Now I have a good friend of mine who owns a supercharged Cobalt SS that has been fairly heavily modified, so I asked them a few questions about their car. 
Let's jump into that now. He owns a 2007 Cobalt SS Supercharged that has been E85 converted with Bridgestone Performance tires, bigger injectors, and dyno tuned along with other supporting mods and a visual overhaul. He's owned it for just under two years, and he says it's been very practical. It comfortably fits four people, has great visibility, and also has very usable trunk space. The most surprising thing to me is that ever since he installed the high performance Summer Bridgestone tires, understeer and torque steer have not really been an issue. The previous owner, who had done a lot of the modifications such as the installation and tuning of the E85 system, had much shittier tires on, and according to him the torque steer was genuinely dangerous. With the introduction of the second generation SS, 260 horsepower was only where it started. A new Cobalt SS was released in 2007, and the most stark change was under the hood. Instead of the Eaton supercharged LSJ, the 2008 model year SS had a turbocharged 2 liter LNF 4 cylinder with variable valve timing. This iteration of the SS did 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds. A Stage 1 kit which raised power to 290 horsepower and 340 pound-feet of torque was made available in October of 2009 after several delays. The kit can be installed by the owner of the car, but final tuning of the ECU had to take place at a GM dealer. The Turbo Cobalt was taken to the Nürburgring for suspension tuning, seeing as generally the handling capability of the supercharged SS was lacking. It did wonders for its driving characteristics. As some of you may already know, it ended up lapping the Nordschleife faster than an R34 Skyline GTR. The Turbo SS also implemented some advanced technology features, such as no lift shifting and a launch control system. Introduced in 2008 was an optional reconfigurable performance display, or RPD, for the coupe model only. This option replaced the standard boost gauge in the A-pillar, and allows the driver to manipulate traction control, stability control, shift points, and the engagement of competition mode. It also acted as a secondary gauge database, showing a variety of performance-oriented statistics. It could display information such as engine torque and horsepower, a g-force graph, boost pressure, wideband air-fuel ratios, oil temperature, and more. The interior was improved as well, with SS-embroidered sport seats with suede-like ultra-lux inserts. Journalists were impressed with the performance of the car in relation to the price. During a review, a journalist added that the 2009 Cobalt SS Turbo is freakishly good at going fast and is the best bang for the buck value below 30 grand. The powertrain in general performance was amazing for the price. The car is far and away one of the best performance bargains in its segment, and somehow nobody seems to really care anymore. There is a small cult following, and companies like ZZP Performance continue to provide development and aftermarket support, but it's fallen out of favor with the general public. I'd say that might be due to the owners, who were generally e-cigarette smoking teenagers and young adults who would saws all the exhaust off and plastic dip the taillights. Despite that, these are greatly capable and unique cars with so much untapped potential. This little bowtie bequeathed compact is ready to blow your mind.